Happy Friday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. It's that time of the day when I update you on what's happening in the tropics. Still very quiet in the tropical Atlantic, the Atlantic Basin with the National Hurricane Center wording, basically saying no tropical cyclone formation expected during the next seven days. I've got a look at that Saharan dust on the map as well, and you can see it's pretty widespread still across the Atlantic. So that will continue to kind of hinder any quick development of any tropical waves that try to come off the coast of Africa or any waves already out there in the Atlantic. So not expecting any tropical depressions, tropical storms or hurricanes for the Atlantic, the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico over the next week. That's great news. Maybe if you're going to take a nice cruise or vacation out to the Caribbean islands, maybe over towards Puerto Rico, Jamaica, into the Cuba area, it is going to be pretty quiet. Maybe a few showers and storms, but overall not expecting any tropical cyclone activity. We've still got that big heat dome over us in Texas, so that should keep things away from us for at least the next week. So things are looking pretty good. We could use some rain, but we certainly don't want a tropical storm because we know what can happen if we do get tropical systems that can bring too much rain. We just need a little bit of rain. So hopefully we will get our rain, but without having to deal with a landfalling tropical system. Over into the eastern Pacific, we've got not one, not two, but three systems that could possibly form into tropical cyclones, tropical depression, tropical storm over the next two to seven days. Two of these have a high chance for development. The one closest to that southwestern Mexican coast, a 70% chance for that one, and an 80% chance for tropical cyclone development for this system in the East Central Pacific, and that one is definitely going to have a very good shot for development into a tropical cyclone over the next week. Also, there's another system to the west of that one now with an increased 50% chance for tropical cyclone development, and that's going to be through the next seven days. So at this point, the Eastern Pacific looks like it could be very active over the next week. Of course, over the last week, we've been tracking Dora, which is still a hurricane. It just continues to go and go and go. It is a little bit weaker. Remember, it was up to a Category 4 hurricane, now down to a Category 2 hurricane with 110 mile per hour winds. I'm going to move over to the opposite side and kind of show you where the Hawaiian Islands are. They're back here. So Dora now well to the south and west of the Hawaiian Islands. But of course, you know, Dora contributed to those catastrophic wildfires that roared across much of western and central portions of the island of Maui in Hawaii, causing potentially billions of dollars of damage, over 50 fatalities. It was basically that pressure difference between the strong winds with Dora and then high pressure to the north of the Hawaiian Islands that created a lot of wind. It was already dry in Hawaii, but this created a lot of wind as Dora passed to the south. That high pressure was to the north, and that tighter pressure gradient meant 60 mile per hour winds at times that helped to spark some of those wildfires. So thank goodness Dora is moving out. It should gradually weaken over the next couple of days and very weak by Wednesday of next week down to 35 miles per hour. So some slow weakening the next couple of days and then it should quickly weaken as we go through the middle of next week. Now I want to talk about the Atlantic, Caribbean and Gulf, the Atlantic Basin. And even though things are quiet now, we're still expecting potentially an above normal season, even with El Nino developing. Normally El Nino would mean more wind shear, a cooler Atlantic, warmer Pacific and less activity in the Atlantic, but we have super warm waters out there. So even though we have that stronger El Nino trying to develop, we're still expecting an above normal season because the water temperatures pretty much all season long have been super warm near record warm levels well into the 80s, even low 90 degree readings off of the southern coast of Florida. You can see those water temperatures for the Gulf for the Caribbean close to 90 degrees. So this is water that would really help to fuel any of these potential depressions tropical storms that may develop towards the end of August and throughout the month of September. So we are concerned that things could get active in a hurry. You can see the yellow areas indicating where we have water temperatures four to six degrees above average, and that includes a big chunk of the Atlantic. So for that reason, NOAA just yesterday came out with their updated hurricane season outlook for the rest of the season, now with a 60% chance for an above normal hurricane season. They increased the number of named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes 
14 to 21 name storms expected, 6 to 11 hurricanes, and 2 to 5 major hurricanes. Of course, those numbers include the name storms that we've already had and the one hurricane that we've already had as well. Of course, we've already had Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and Don out there for the Atlantic Basin. Next name on the list for the Atlantic would be Emily, and then we'd have Franklin, Gert, and Harold. And of course, several additional names if needed as we go through the remainder of our hurricane season. We're getting closer to the middle of August at this point, but still we have not reached that absolute peak typically of a hurricane season, and that would be in September, right around September 10th. So we've still got a ways to go to see if we can escape getting hit by anything because we still got to get through the rest of this month. September, typically the most active month, and then the first half of October, we could end up seeing some action heading closer to us. But after the middle of October, our chances will start to go down pretty quickly. But until we get there, we're going to keep you updated and let you know if we see anything concerning out there. But right now, I think we're good. It's all about that dangerous heat out there, the hot and dry weather. But once that pattern starts to shift, maybe by late August and into September, we'll be monitoring very closely for any tropical systems that could head towards Southeast Texas. For now, though, just be on guard, stay alert, review your insurance plans, review your evacuation plan if you live in an evacuation zone make sure you have that hurricane preparedness emergency kit ready to go so that you're not scrambling at the last minute in case we have a system headed our way also make sure to grab the fox 26 weather app get the latest tropical weather your forecast cones we've got a cool follow me feature on there and all of the hurricane watches and warnings that may come out you can find them there as well. Just turn the alerts on after you download the app. Just head to the App Store and search for Fox 26. All right, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shea. That's your tropical update. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a great weekend.